Welcome back. Let's talk today briefly about a question that showed up in the Facebook group the other day, a question that even though I feel like I've answered it a million times on video and otherwise is common. The question in particular on the Facebook group was, do I need to change my career to improve my eyesight? Because it was a person, journalist, I think, on the computer all the time, spending a lot of time in close-up. And generally being aware that while you're in close-up, you don't really have that much opportunity to improve your eyesight. Contrary to what a lot of people online say with eye exercises and plus lenses and all that stuff, for the most part, while you're in close-up mode, the best you're going to do is minimize close-up strain, which, as you probably already know by now, has all kinds of negative effects and prevents you from doing the things that would improve your eyesight. So, close-up, lots of things we can do that we covered in other videos, reduced doctors, of course, taking breaks, having natural daylight, all those things that help you minimize a close-up strain. Now, what I may be failing to explain properly is the real importance of outdoor active focus distance vision. And this is something you, you genuinely have to experiment with, which genuinely may require a little, a little bit of lifestyle change, a little bit of effort, a little bit of getting out of your comfort zone, out of your routines. There is an amount of time, which varies per individual, an activity that notably changes the quality of your distance vision. And to give an example of this, I travel a lot. For example, right now, this is my Airbnb in Budapest, much less ghetto than the one in Kiev from recently. And in Budapest, I tend to walk 10 to 15 kilometers a day, which is not really that big of a deal if you think about it. Instead of taking the train or the tram or the bus to meet friends or, or riding a bike, I walk, you know, so it, it adds couple hours in the day total, maybe a little tiny bit more. But for me, in this example right now, that's possible. A lot of other time I spend, for example, in Myanmar, in Rangoon, which is a really crowded, really hot, really unpleasant to walk in city. There are no sidewalks. It's, it's really not fun. So while I walk there too, I get at maximum, at maximum an hour a day. And that's something that I don't look forward to. I don't really enjoy, like it's not pleasant and I don't have outdoor hobbies there. Just to compare these, these two particular examples. There is a noticeable, a significantly noticeable change in the quality of my distance vision after a few weeks in Europe, after a few weeks of having the 10, 15 kilometer walks every day, where my distance vision, and if your vision is already quite good, you notice it in the focusing speed. Like if you spend three hours in front of a computer and you go outside, it takes you a little bit to get the distance focus back. And the more ciliary spasm you have, the more you strain yourself in close up, the less cumulative outdoor time you have, the more you have that residual blur. And this is what I'm talking about takes experimenting and experience and time to recognize how clear can your vision get? How long does it take for you to be outside to get to that point? And the more time you spend outside, the more time you're actively engaging your distance vision, not as an exercise, but genuinely, like I'm looking around, I'm looking at signs, I'm looking at my environment curiously and in an interested way, it makes a significant difference. My vision when I'm in, in Burma, after a month, I can tell is degrading. You know, like you'd almost have to resort to plus ones use, you'd almost have to resort to trickery to keep it there because I'm not getting enough relative time outdoors, I'm not getting enough relative time in distance vision mode. And if I did that for six months, it would be tricky to maintain 2020 and above eyesight not having that much outdoor time. And the difference really in outdoor time between between there in Asia and here in Europe isn't technically that great, you know? You can, and maybe you're looking at this going, I can't walk 15 kilometers. I'm using me as an example here of, I just happen to be walking. Um, I spend a few months out of the year in Vietnam kite surfing and the same thing happens there. I spent, if you spend a few hours outside looking at kites, looking at, at waves, looking at other people partaking in the sport at a distance, that 
stimulus, that focal stimulus makes up for a lot of your computer time. There's a lot of those times like here, genuinely it's, it's now it's cold and rainy and when I'm not outside, I'm sitting in front of the computer more than I should. It's entirely possible that I'm spending six hour a day in front of a computer, seven hours even. I take a big break, I try to, to, to stop after a three hour chunk but I still spend a lot of time in front of a computer. Like you couldn't have a full-time job doing computer work, having about this kind of amount of hours if you control yourself and then you don't spend the rest of your spare time on Facebook. It makes a huge difference. And, and I guess this long and rambling video is about, I want to encourage you to find that difference. You know, like whether it's just an experimental thing, whether you get a dog and the dog has to go for walks, whether, whether you find a strange and interesting new hobby, like in the past I picked up rowing, I used to do that for a while, I did boxing, I did water polo, I did all kinds of not entirely mainstream kind of things, trying to get that outdoor time, or trying, even if it's not necessarily outdoors, if it's in a swimming pool, the ball's flying around, you have to focus on the ball. Those kinds of things make a significant difference if you look at them over the course of several weeks compared to not having them. And so when people ask, do I need to change my career or, or can I be a computer programmer and still improve my site? It's control what you do in your close up time. Control the strain, light, have good ambient lighting, use the right correction, stay at the edge of blur, challenge your vision when you're in close up mode, you know, don't get too close. Make, that makes a significant difference in reducing the strain and the wrong kind of stimulus. But then when you want the improvement, you need enough outdoor time. And the only way you find out, and again, it doesn't have to be outdoor, it just has to be real distance vision. And the only way you can find out that is having the experience, you know, like make a plan of spending the next three or four weeks doing something that requires extended and consistent distance vision and see how it affects your vision in general using all the practices you're already using today compare your centimeter, compare your snell, compare your focusing speed, compare all that stuff when you're adding, say, an hour of cumulative outdoor time a day for the hour you already have. Like if you, if you squeeze in all a little bit of extra times and you get it to two hours instead of an hour, you do that for three or four weeks, look at if and how much that changes the quality of your distance vision. You have to. And because there's a ton in there, you can get away with a lot of computer time as long as you get that outdoor vision. And it's also a great way to get away from the screen addiction that all of us have on some latent level is finding, like first you might just do it as practice. It might not be that enjoyable, but you do it. And then you realize how big of a difference it makes. And then maybe you start digging for what is a, an activity, what is a new hobby, what's a thing I could do to encourage me to use my distance vision. And that slowly, it improves your distance vision over time and it improves the quality of your life and the quality of what you do with your distance vision over time as well, right? So it's not just a mechanistical kind of exercise where you do a thing because you have to do a thing, but then after a while you realize, hey, I like doing X kind of sport or activity that takes you to distance vision that then improves your distance vision and improves your quality of life overall. And I'm gonna cut it off here in a moment. I just want to point out that all of this is symbiotic. Like a vision, while we start with a simple, just tangible bits and no unicorn farming, in the end translates to you will ultimately get better vision from knowing these practice and understanding what you're doing, but holistically and in the bigger picture from addressing the lifestyle issues that contribute to myopia, both the physical myopia and the, and the conceptual myopia. So try that. Take away from this is try to add to your outdoor time and over four to six weeks, see how that affects your distance vision. And don't freak out about having to use a computer. That's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.